Good everyone and welcome to today's Living Life. Have you ever heard it said that you could prove anything and pretty much everything from the Bible? Uh, you know, everything under the sun, good or bad, that there are verses and passages you can quote to support anything and everything. You may not have, but uh, I can kind of believe it because I've seen, you know, seen it, seen it in bits and pieces here and there uh, where people take verses and phrases out of context and they put it to, like I said, almost anything and it, you could make it sound plausible and or right. And I'm sorry, you know, for this imagery, but if you take Psalm 139, today's Psalm, out of context, it can actually sound a little bit stalkery. Right, if you know what I mean. Like, if you think about it, like, you know, knows everything, you know, I've searched you and known you, I know everywhere you go, I know what you did last summer, you know, things like this. Um, you know, please don't be offended because that's not what I think or believe, but I'm just saying, if you are a non, if a non-believer was to read this without truly understanding, um, including the last few Psalms as well, you know, you could plausibly think of it in this way. Now, this would only be possible if we uh, take ourselves as completely separate and unrelated uh, to and from God. Uh, but as the last verse of Psalm 138 says in the NLT, the Lord will work out his plans for my life. For your, for your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't ab abandon me, for you made me. This is why we begin today's psalm that says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know, God doesn't need to follow us around because it is we who are in him, in his hand, and as his creation. So let's read the psalm and then we'll continue. Psalm chapter 139, verses 1 through 12. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. So yesterday we talked a little bit about the greatness of God uh, with the intimacy of God. And so often we as limited human beings can only focus on one or the other, or one at a time. And often it comes out in our teaching uh, and preaching uh, in giving a limited understanding or scope of God. And we, so we think about one or the other, one at a time. But something that I learned uh, in preparing for the last four days um, and the passages of Psalms uh, 136 to today 139 is that the greatness of God guarantees us the intimacy or closeness of God. And then the flip is that the, um, the loving intimacy of God is what makes and proves God as being so great. You know, I was asked once by a Jehovah's Witness many years ago when I was much younger, how could God be everywhere at the same time? Right? He was talking about uh, the attribute of God, you know, the omnipresence, that He is everywhere all the time of God. And um, I guess they don't believe in that. I'm not really sure, but he knocked on our door and you know, he was kind of, I think, challenge, trying to challenge me and ask me that. And you know, I was young and simple and praise God that I was young and simple because I just gave the simplest explanation that I could think of at that moment, which is because he's God, right? How can God be everywhere at the same time? Because, well, he's God. So you know, he tried to kind of further on and say, you know, but wait, Think about it, right? How can you explain and believe uh, in something like that? You know, that's so impossible. And so this time, I, you know, I think I paused a little bit, 
because he tried to, he made me, made it sound like I was wrong. So I was like, okay, wait, did I miss something? Am I missing something? And I thought about it a little longer and I couldn't come up with anything else. So I said, well, because he's God, you know, what other explanation can I especially think of? And I, you know, continuing, I said, well, who are we? Who are you to say what is possible and impossible with God? Right? Such a simple way, and praise God that I was simple. Um, maybe today I will try to think of a more theologically you know, profound thing to say. But at the same time, that is it, right? We try to limit God in a sense by trying to understand Him, but we do not have the ability to understand Him. All the theology of the attributes of God boils down to the content and truth of this psalm, I think, that He knows us completely, in a way that even we don't truly understand and appreciate. There is no place where He is not there. He is with us and we are in Him completely. And this only sounds weird uh, if you do not know and believe God. And if you don't know and believe God, this is what you are missing out on. You know, I love stories about great and famous songs. And one of my favorite uh, background stories of a worship song uh, is one that I'm sure you know, it's from a while ago, uh, for a worship song called He Knows My Name, right? I'm sure you know that song. And uh, the writer, um, in one of the recordings, and I love like live recordings because, you know, they, they say things, they, they really lead worship rather than just, you know, perform or sing songs. And the writer was telling us the story of the song, and he was at a mission trip uh, visiting an orphanage, and I don't know if he sang the song or if it's before he wrote the song exactly, but one, one child, one boy, came up to him, introduced himself uh, to him, and then he said, you know, you know my name, right? Remember, remember me. You know, what's my name? And he said, you know, I know your name, I remember. And the kid ran away smiling, you know, jumping. And then, uh, you know, a while later, the boy runs up back to him and said, what's my name? And, you know, the writer guy um, said, you know, I, I know, I remember your name and, and said his name. And the boy had the biggest smile on his face. And that is when he realized we all want to be known. We want to be remembered. We want, to, we want people to know and recognize who we are. And this is the heart uh, to which this psalm talks to. Right? That we, more than anything, want to be known. Because that means that you matter. That means we matter. And more than anything, that is the heart of Psalm 139. We, that is I, you, matter to God intimately, completely. We matter to God who knows you. You matter to God who knows you intimately. He knows us all of us at the same time, all the time, in good and wonderful ways, especially when the realities of this temporal world is painful, which is why He is so great. And He deserves to be recognized for this greatness, goodness, and love that endures forever. If you haven't noticed, I worked my way back uh, the last four days in the last four days of Psalms. And some of you need this desperately today. Right? But you need to surrender to God and accept His knowledge of you as the greatest and undeserved gift. The amazing thing is that we don't have to know God like He knows us to have a relationship with Him. All that we need, all that requires, all that He requires of us is that we turn around and we meet Him in humility and open ourselves. You see, part of God's greatness is that He doesn't exercise the fullness of His greatness over us. As in, He could literally make us do anything and everything. But He is patient and kind, and He even waits for us to open our lives completely to Him, because He already knows us. As we end today, I want to read to you a short quote uh, from David Benner, in his, uh, who wrote in his book, Surrender to Love. The key to spiritual transformation is meeting God in vulnerability. Our natural inclination is to bring the most presentable parts of ourself to the encounter with God. But God wants us to bring our whole self to the divine encounter. God wants you 
to bring yourself to Him as you are, with all your vulnerabilities, pain, mistakes, wounds, uh, and even sin as well. And it's not because He doesn't know. He knows. But it is actually for our benefit that when we say and confess what, I, what is inside us to Him, we are acknowledging and surrendering ourselves to Him. So let's come to Him in confession and humility and open ourselves in vulnerability to Him. And I will guarantee you, He who knows you will heal you and will cover you in His love. So let's turn to Him today. Let's pray. Uh, God, we thank You for this amazing truth, uh, this great com comfort, Lord, that You know us already inside and out. Lord, but you call us and you wait for us to come to you in your kindness, in your gentleness, Lord. And even for that, uh, we thank you as well. I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in the hearts of your people, in the hearts of people who may not know you as yet, that we can turn to you, open our hearts to meet you, O God, one on one, and to receive the fullness of your greatness and of your great love especially, so that we, make, we can be transformed, Lord. We want to be known by you and to know completely that you know us, and that is the greatest thing that we can have. So I pray you do your work in us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.